What's good guys, it's Joseph and today we're going to be working in Illustrator and After Effects at the same time. Um, title of the video is probably going to be like how to work in Illustrator and After Effects at the same time, you know, kind of kind of thing like that. So um, I've made a video like this in the past where I've, you know, had a logo or whatever in Illustrator and I imported it in, into After Effects and showed you how to animate it. Um, this is just going to be a little bit more in-depth explaining on, you know, why that works. So as you see, got After Effects open. Um, I don't got nothing in here, um, and I got Illustrator open. I have a little vectorized, you know, image of like a desert type thing, pretty minimal that I found online. Um, and so we're just gonna, you know, animate this. Um, and so let's go ahead and get it rolling. I'm gonna, I'm gonna start off in Illustrator here. Um, let's say you just, you know, created this and you're ready to import it into After Effects. Um, one of the first things you'll have to do is make sure everything here is on its own individual layer. Um, depending on how you worked in Photoshop, it might already be like that. For me, if you look over here, everything is on this one layer. And so what you could do is just create a bunch of layers and then click and drag these to each one. But something that will work um, a little bit faster is if you click this, it's gonna have everything selected in here. So make sure like the layer is selected and then click these little three, three little lines up here and then um, release to layers sequence. Don't click build. Sequence is the one you want. Everything's gonna be on its own layer now. Now you can highlight all of them and drag them out and it's, they're all gonna be on their own layer. Obviously you can get rid of the empty one. And so now everything is on its own layer and After Effects is gonna understand that and it is going to have layers in After Effects as well. Um, if it's something a little bit more complex, you can go in and just double click these and name them whatever. Just to be a little bit more organized, I'm not going to go through and do that just for the sake of the video, but this is all ready to go. Um, obviously, if you're looking at this tutorial, you're probably not figuring, want, wanting to know how to make this. Obviously, it's pretty easy. It's a bunch of shape layers, but whatever you have made, just go ahead and save it. This is important. You just want to save as and just make sure it's an AI. I'm just going to go to my videos and just save it as tutorial. And then that's that. So just make sure you save it as an Illustrator file. And now we can quickly go over into After Effects. I'm going to leave Illustrator open just because, just in case I want to change something, you know, you never know. So I'm going to go into the videos. I'm going to import this AI. I'm going to save it just for the sake of this. I'm just going to save this After Effects file as, you know, I have a I have a um, After Effects, you know, pre-save that I use for every tutorial I do just to show you guys what's going on. So now, since I, you know, imported the Illustrator file into After Effects, it it goes in the form as a composition. And I'm actually going to go ahead and delete that. I'm going to do it again to show you. There's a dialog box that comes up. So whenever you, um, I'm going to drag this in here. This is probably this is what will come up for you. The default may be footage, um, and so if you import it as footage, it's not going to have the layer option. So you want to make sure you import it as a composition. And so um, also footage dimensions, make sure you have this set to layer size. It's going to make your life a lot easier when you're importing. Um, so there you go. Basically every shape or whatever um, is going to be like editable by like whatever size the layer is and not by like the composition which is 1080 by 1080. So I'm just gonna go ahead and click OK here. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and just name, well, I'm, it's already named tutorial. I can open up the composition. If I go to composition settings here, so I have my composition selected, I go to composition, composition settings. Um, I can see that it's already 1080 by 1080, it's 30 frames a second. You can go ahead and change this to whatever you want. If you want it to be 24, 25, all that good stuff. I'm just gonna leave it at 30 just because um, you can change it to, I'll just do like 15 seconds and everything is its own layer. So now it's completely editable. Um, something that you'll wanna do right off the bat, whenever you have an Illustrator you know, shape. So I'm just gonna click this random shape in the middle here. I'm gonna press S on my keyboard and scale it up just a bunch, just to show you. And if you look, look how like it loses quality, which doesn't make sense because it's an illustrator shape, right? And so what you can do to fix that, just highlight all of your layers and click. And so this option is called the, um, what's it called? Continuously rasterize. 
So which basically means it's going to keep its quality no matter what you do to it. So just enable that. And now it's keeping the quality. It's using the mathematical vectorized formula to keep it a good quality. So I'm going to go ahead and put this scale back to 100, back to where it originally was. So now that's all good and dandy. Um, now we can go ahead and get into animating it really quick. So for some reason, there's some people that will go and highlight all of these and then create, go to create and then create shapes via vector layer, which is something that you can do. Um, and it's, it's actually a pretty good workflow because you can animate the paths of the shape layers. But for this, I'm not actually going to do that. So it's nice to keep it as an Illustrator file. So I'll show you why. If I go into Illustrator and then say, like, I want to change the color scheme of this. Obviously, you can change the color scheme. You can change the colors in After Effects. Like, that's not an issue. But say if there's something that is not easily, you know, editable in After Effects. Like, I can't really think of something off the top of my head. But there's something that you can only really edit well in Illustrator. But for this, the only thing I can think of is like the shape of the mountain or whatever. But I'll just show you guys really quick. Say I just, for some reason, really wanted to change the color in Illustrator or whatever. I'll just change it to like black. Say I wanted this mountain to be black or whatever. And I'm just going to go ahead and go to file, you know, save as whatever. Make sure you save to the same Illustrator file. It's going to say it already exists. Just replace it. Just press OK. Go back in After Effects, it updates automatically. So that's pretty much you. You're working in both programs here now. Um, and so it's a really good workflow. De depending on what you're working on, um, I'm going to go ahead and go back in here and just make sure it's the same color because that actually really bothers me that it is black. <laughs> but that's it. And then so now you have a workflow where you're using both at the same time. Um, I do this a lot depending on what I'm making. But now you can just go ahead and highlight all of them and you can just, you know, animate the position and all that good stuff. You can do the old position animation where they all come up and then it's offsetted by like a few seconds um, or whatever. <laughs> you can kind of play around with that. But I'm sure you guys know how to do all this stuff the main the main tutorial here was kind of showing you guys how it's done, you know. But you can always just go play around with this and you know, just have fun. So now that's coming up and then so is everything else. Woo. But um that's pretty much it. I'm trying to think of anything else that needs to be said. Obviously just to go over everything, make sure that you're using continuously rasterized just to keep that high quality of you know vector graphics that you're probably using in these animations you can always go back you can make changes and save it in illustrator and then come back here if it's something that you can't really change in after effects um, obviously if you really if I really wanted to I can highlight all of these and then create shapes from all of these it's gonna save your um, illustrator layers but if you were to edit these ones and then you're like oh wait I actually do need to change something that I can't really change in the layers. You're going to have to go and do all the animation again because the, these are the layers that are connected to Illustrator, if that makes sense. Um, and so, like, it's just, that's pretty much how it works. That's how they're linked together is through the Illustrator layers. So, and, and that's just to put it, you know, plainly. There's There's probably a lot more that goes behind it. The same, you can work between After Effects and Premiere Pro pretty much the same way. Like I know in Premiere Pro you can, you know, convert something into like an After Effects composition or whatever. Um, I don't have a lot of experience in Premiere so I can't really teach you on that right now. But I might make a video on it later once I do some research. But, you know, other than that, that's pretty much all I got. Um, obviously, if you have any more questions, go ahead and comment down below. If you enjoyed the video, if you felt like you learned something, you know, just make sure you like, subscribe, all that good stuff. Um, if you need to reach out to me directly, um, maybe my, I think I have my Discord in the description. If not, I'll probably put it down there. Or you can just DM me on Twitter. My DMs are open 24-7. Um, other than that, hope you guys stay safe. Have a great rest of the day. I'm out. Peace.